Black Friday sales in full effect. If you want your brand, your business, or your song promoted, hit me up right now to find out how you can get it done for just $49. The email is O-G-O-D at hiphopun.com. That's O-God at hiphopun.com. Of the Hip Hop Uncensored Podcast. Oh God, what's good, my brother? What up, what up, man? What's the Tuesday, November the twenty eighth? Wow, this month is almost gone, wow. man. The year is almost gone. That's crazy. It's moving, it's moving real quick. But nevertheless, we in the building once again. Go over a few things that happened today. Um, so earlier, earlier, well, just then actually, uh, the federal court uphold C murder's murder conviction. We'll talk about that also today. As prophesized by us last week, Diddy steps down as the head of Revolt TV. Let's start with Diddy. Um, found out earlier today that he stepped down as the head of Revolt. Like I said, Friday when we were doing our show, we talked about this. We talked about, you know, whether or not other brands and, you know, brands he's already associated with would start pulling away, disassociating themselves from Diddy. And the first one, which is his biggest, Revolt. He stepped down of a company that he owns. But I'm sure they got board members and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. what's your thoughts on that, man? Did he stepping down, man, as chairman of Revolt? A lot of people, when we talked about it last week, kind of kind of called us crazy about that, honestly. It, it, was, it was weird that I got a, a lot of comments about, oh, y'all tripping it, Revolt ain't this, Revolt ain't that, when it comes to play, and it's like, oh, really? <laughs> y'all haven't been paying attention the last few years of what they be taking away from people when shit goes down. So... Um, pretty, pretty serious. Yeah. This is pretty serious. Now, when we talk talking about billionaire status and we start talking about different ventures and different avenues of revenue, this is a big one, right? This also makes you beg the question on, and like I alluded to last week, if he has people and investors that they bought into, did they have a sit-down meeting and say, all right, listen, either you walk away gracefully or we make you leave? Because... You're bad for business right now. Yep. And you got to go. I don't care how much of this and that. No. This shit's bad for business. And if you don't want Breakfast Club, and if you don't want Drink Champs, and you don't want the conferences, and you don't want the concerts and everything else that comes with Revolt to be at risk, you better get up out of here. Yeah. And that's what happened. And I seen something. I should have screenshotted it. And I was looking for it. Something to do with a charter program or a charter school or something like that that Diddy's involved with. They oh, yeah. also broke ties with him. Oh, his charter school that he got. They broke ties with him. Ooh, because it don't look good. It's getting real, man. Yeah, it don't look good. It, yeah, and we, and we talked about, again, we talked about this last week. Yep. Brought this up. I asked the question. I'm like, yo, could you see it? And then we, feed it, we see this. We've seen this play before. Brands, you know, and that's the real power in this thing is brands and advertising dollar and money and things like that that are tied to other brands. Uh, 50 Cent was even joking today. He said, um, you know, Cadillac and AT&T AT are going to pull out. Mm. So they must be somebody that's associated with Diddy, Revolt. And like these brands, it's a trickle-down effect because it may not be right now that anybody starts going at AT&T or Cadillac or the charter school. But right. next week, next month. They may say, people say, may say, well, look, the shareholders or the customers may say, how are you going to be funding or associated with a company with a man like this that did this? Exactly. They're saying that these, the discovery alone was going to bury Diddy. Like, it was so much stuff that came out. Witnesses were going to come out. It would have been ugly, ugly, ugly for Diddy. So, again, um, this is not going to be the first, and it damn sure ain't going to be the last because I see more residual effect coming from you know, the mere allegations. Yeah, speaking on not being the last, Capital Preparatory Schools, I got a statement here from Dr. Steve Perry himself. Following a comprehensive evaluation, a decision has been made to end the partnership between Capital Preparatory Schools and Sean Combs. While this decision was not made lightly, we firmly believe it is the best interest of our organization's health and future. This is going to happen, bro. <sighs> wow. It's real. Wow. It's getting real. And... And we, we asked the question to our brother Andrew Wyatt in, okay, we see what's happening in the courts and we see what's happening in civil. And we even asked the lawyer we had on, we, we see what's going on as far as if this will go criminal or not. But how does this affect him in the court of public opinion? Because in public opinion, he's getting absolutely diced up like lettuce. Man. And now we're seeing that residual effect of how public perception because he's been found guilty of nothing, but a lot of stuff is being talked about, and a lot of people know, okay, he might not have been found guilty, but we know he did it, and that's just ringing in everybody's head. 
And now look, it's crazy. I'm starting to get the inclination from just listening and talking to people that a lot of people think he did this. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, and it's like yeah. his bodyguard, his former head of security, excuse me, is ready to talk. And I'm not talking about Gene Dale. He's been speaking. He's been talking. <laughs> talking about Roger Bonds. He kind of already, you know, put it out there that he had to, you know, stop Diddy on a few times for whooping on Cassie. That's already out there. Um, it's it, it will be so many other witnesses, I think, that will come forward. Man, and um, a lot of people say the chickens are coming home to roost. Is that the case for Diddy? Are the chickens coming home to roost on Diddy? Still too early to say, but right. when it looks, it's it's raining down on them. Like, Cassie set off a firestorm, and it's like either she made people feel safe to talk or they seen a crack in the door and they put <laughs> their Tims on and start busting that mother effer down. Right. Either way, holy shit, once a year we see somebody – just put on a pedestal and highlighted for all the disgusting things that they allegedly done. Who's next? I mean, I, we, we ain't even done with Diddy. I don't even want to go ahead in the future and say who's next, but this is almost the equivalent of a rapper getting murdered. Like, damn, you, you can pretty much bank that somebody's going to get caught up in something and that status of power will be taken away. It's not a question of when, it's a question of who. And is it, in your opinion, is it the fact that Diddy... Maybe it's too arrogant, too cocky. He got too rich that this that he's kind of being, you know, targeted now. Too targeted rich now. Okay, so let's let's let's. I want to play some hypotheticals, right? Let's say he did it. Let's say the people in power knew he did it, right? And let's say the people in power kept everybody quiet, everybody cool, allowed him yeah. to be able to walk around with immunity or what's the word? I can't think of a word right now. Right. But walk around basically free to do and say whatever he want, he was good. Right. And let's say something happened between somebody and a disagreement occurred and all right, blah, 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 and somebody said, all right, now that's that's gone, let's open that up. And now all of a sudden, he realizes he's not as strong. See, a lot of people, that they talk about conspiracy theories when it comes to this stuff, but this type of stuff is real, though. I think it was a Surratt thing as far as him moving and going after Surratt for the whole racial discrimination thing. And it may have been real, right? I don't know. I don't know. But I just think that in this country, from my experience, it seemed like it's frowned upon for anybody black to really flex their muscle. And when I mean flex their muscle, like really try to exercise some power. And that's what he did when he did that. Now, I could be totally wrong. Maybe I'm on the conspiracy stuff. Mm -hmm. But I believe personally, as soon as he went after that company that's worth who knows? Worth more than Diddy, obviously, because he had to go to them to get the brand going and whatnot. This company, um, I think it's Diego Spirit that owns Surratt, other you know big brands and not whatnot. Maybe they pushed the button on them. Maybe they, you know, because another thing I can kind of compare this to is when they said that um, Bill Cosby tried to purchase MC NBC. It's like, how dare you? Like you think you're getting too big, and it's and again a power move, whatever the power move may be, whether it's to go buy a network, whether it's to, you know, try to go after another company. I just feel like that, and I just I've seen those examples too many times to think that it's anything other than that. But or just could be he's a creep, and now the skeleton is now coming out the closet because it's just that just that time. Let me ask you this: because every situation is isolated, right? And we talk about when. Black people in power, they when they try to flex their muscle or something or try to show a certain level of power, they get dropped off a pedestal. We talked about Dr. Cosby, NBC. In this situation with Diddy, right, do you think that it's the situation where he tried to flex his muscle with Ciroc and now they're trying to railroad him or they're opening up skeletons that he created himself? And if that's the case, if, they, if he created himself, then how do we look at that? Because even though we believe he's being railroaded, right? I think we both can can agree that something in certain cases, certain instances, here. yeah. But do you think that it's because he really did something and they had something on him, or are they trying to railroad? I think it's both. I think I think it's a little bit of both. I think that some of the stuff is true, um, but I think that when you start seeing the, the different people that are coming out from the '91 and shit like that, it's just like the, the trickle down, the collateral damage effect. Of like, all right, like you said, the cracks open. Now let's bust this shit open. Like, all right, Cassie came through. We're going to bring some more people. And I, again, it sounds like some shit that could be out of a movie, right, right yeah, that, that yeah. this happens. But stranger things have happened. So I, I believe it's that. I believe that, yeah, he did some foul shit and it's coming back. But also I feel like, all right, now it's the opportunity now presents itself 
for the elite or the powers that be, whoever, mm-hmm. now to say, all right, let's destroy this dude now. Like we got, we got the doors open. Let's kick that bitch open. Yeah, I agree. I yeah, think, I think that there's some some level of truth to this, and and the person that he is, you know what I'm saying, and. I think that some of it is like, okay, we've seen this opportunity, now we're going to turn it up to 50. Like, let's go. A lot of questions, a lot of things people were saying was that Jay-Z was next. Um, it's kind of hard to do. It was like, next or what? But right. if this is the pattern, if this is what's going on, could Jay-Z possibly be next in this whole, you know, because, ter- I mean, he's the head hey, honcho out of all this shit. I don't want to wish it on him. Nah. Definitely don't want to wish it on him, but... Nah. And it don't have to... Man. God willing, we're doing this podcast in 10 years and something like this go down. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't think it'll happen tomorrow. I don't think it'll happen next week. Right. Right. I don't think he'll be the next one. Right. But if he is one of them, then everything that we've been talking about speculating over these years doing this show just comes up. (laughs) Holy shit. Yeah. Um, do I think he's next? I wanna I wanna say that he's not. But like I said, if he is, boy, man. If it's ten years from now, we might have to knock the dust off this motherfucker and just come on and do a show, talk about it. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Man, I don't know. That'd be crazy. Do yeah. you what you think? Man, you know, I would say he may not be next, but somebody's gonna be on the chopping block again. Right. Real soon. It's just a part, a part of this history, man, in America, it's like we can probably go back, you know, for for even old entertainers and all the way up until now. Your Michael Jacksons, your Bill Cosby's, and I think as the the people grow and evolve, it's just new subjects. Like they put new players into position and new people that they can say, all right, boom. Even we even seen shit with like Trey Songs and like Chris Brown and you know uh, um, Usher and little certain. You know, times and stuff. So, you just got to be really squeaky clean. I think at the end of the day, it's one thing for you to do this shit, mm-hmm. and if you're coming out, it's one, it's another thing for you not to have done anything. And it's just lies. So we got to kind of try to juggle that because we weren't there, and because we seen people that have been falsely accused, yep. and we seen people that are creeps and that did it. So we got to kind of juggle that shit. Word. You know, when when speaking about it. So I don't want to put that on Jay's name, but people are starting to say that. But We'll see. If if it does happen, we'll, we'll cover it for you. Yeah, I, I promise you that. <laughs> no doubt. Be the first thing. I don't want to see him t- torn down, though, man. That's a fact. You Let's know? talk about C murder, man. That, that was crazy what you told me earlier. Yeah, man. So a federal judge, a federal judge, upheld C murder's murder conviction despite two key witnesses recanting their statement. Um, the ruling came in by U.S. District Judge Sarah Vance. She denied his habeas petition by his attorneys. Um, they sought on a few different occasions to get this uh, ruling overturned. Now, if it's not looking good for him, man, he's going to have to remain in there. Uh, I don't know if he can do it again or if he has another shot at it, but this is definitely the worst possible scenario. Um, we had people reaching out to us personally on yeah. a few different occasions, yeah. talking about the conditions. He has done hunger strikes. We interviewed Master P talking about this and... Um, we interviewed his rep, remember that? Remember oh, yeah, the rep. Yeah, I forgot yeah. about that. The rep, too. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it's come down to this. Not the news he wanted, man. What's your thoughts, man? We've been covering this thing for like four or five years now. Damn, man. That's another thing I don't want to wish on another brother because when you look at the evidence, when you look at that case, it definitely looks like those people down in New Orleans set that man up. It's like, it's no question about it. Right. But in doing that, they made sure they stamped that he'll never get out. And my initial reaction when you told me this is, that brother's going to die in jail. Damn. I hope I'm wrong. I, I, I hope on everything I love I'm wrong. I look forward to one day being able to get behind his microphone and say, I'm wrong. See murder's home. You know right. what I mean? Um, I, I pers- What's my man's name? I personally know. God damn, that's, that's Master P's name. Oh. Corey Miller. Oh, yeah, okay. okay. Corey Miller's home. Cause I think even C murder that annotation, the name, that's like we see, cool. it Man. just it puts a stigma on it, right? So yeah. hopefully one day we could say Corey Miller's home. But um, that uh, they 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 put him in there for a reason. They wanted him in there, and now it looks like the judge and everybody else is just as corrupt as everybody else, and they're gonna keep him in there. That's Wait, they say New Orleans is one of the um most corrupt court systems 
if not the most corrupt court system in America. Mm. And we got a lot of people that watch us from everywhere. We probably yeah. got people that work in the courts, cops and all that shit that watch us. They do. Shout out to y'all, but <laughs> y'all some corrupt mofos down there in New Orleans, man. Let that man go. But nah, man, I, I don't know. I thought at one time you had Kim Kardashian. Mm -hmm. And what happened to that? Like, is that just, you know, I mean, dead now? I mean, it looked good at the time. Right. Nice publicity stun. Yeah, it looked good at the time. But um, yeah, it's like 90 something, six pages out. I'm not gonna, definitely not gonna go through all that. Um, explain, I guess, why they don't want to do it. But um, I, I feel like you feel, I feel like they, they really got it out for this man. Like, mm. it's a situation where, like, nah, we're not letting you out. I don't care how much time you complain, how many times you beg. We ain't letting you out of this thing. Even you got two witnesses that recanted. At yeah. least get this man a new trial. Right. We ain't saying, okay, just let him out, but give him a new trial, a new chance to fight it because they know, in my opinion, he'll probably win. Yeah. It's so old. You know, people have recanted their statements at this point. It's an injustice, man. But, I mean, I think some people believe that this system, because it's supposed to be blind, the system. You know, they got the lady up there with the blindfold. But I think in certain instances, the system does work how it's supposed to work. Like, you, in certain, you know, um, areas, you could probably get a fair trial. You could probably, you know, you have your chance to, you know, submit your evidence and things like that. But at the end of the day, it's like it's too much corruption to think that everywhere you're going to get it. Because, like I said, it's supposed to be a blind system of justice. So that means right. I mean, everywhere in the United States, no matter what state you're in, right. you should be able to get, you know, that presumption. But you don't. And, um, you know, people talk about the Jim Crow South and things like that. Shit, the North is just as bad. Yep. These Commonwealth states are just as bad as when it comes to, you know, fighting in court. So um, we still got a long way to go. I know it's not perfect, a perfect system, but um, I just think that they should definitely get this man another chance to at least go to trial and fight it. That's all. Could we potentially see one day in the future a president potentially pardon him if the mm. if, if it gets loud enough, kind of like Trump did to a few people? Right. Could that be in, that? That obviously could be in play. But what do you think about that scenario? Yeah, I mean, that'd be dope. I don't. I mean, I don't. For what it's looking like, it's probably gonna be Trump again, but still early. Mm -hmm. um, he did pardon a lot of people. Yeah. So then he pardoned Desiree Perez too. I think. I think did Trump he? did. I think so. But yeah, Kodak. I know he did Angela Stan King, which we gotta we gotta talk to her too. Yeah, yeah. What happened to that joint? But we'll get to that. Yeah. We'll um, get to yeah. But yeah, that that's um. I thought she's so going so hard for Trump. I just realized that. Yeah. I seen a video of her on TikTok the other day yep. talking about Trump. But nah, man, um, I wish the best um, for Corey. Because yeah, like you said, sure. that C murder thing is crazy. Uh, yeah. And um, we got the best people fighting for him. I mean, your brother, Master P, even though people talk what they say about stuff, you know, whatever yeah, yeah. issues they had. Right. Um, you got a rich dude behind you, you know, celebrities and stuff. So it, it could be a little worse in that regard. But... Um, I really thought he would get a chance, like covering yeah. this like we did over the last year, the hunger strike. Yeah. I thought that he had a fighting chance. Now sure. it looks like it, it's over. It's over, bro. And yep. I, hopefully we'll be wrong, and hopefully we can talk about Corey Miller being home, but this ain't good news. So prayers out to him and his family. Man. For sure. What else we got? Uh, you got anything else over there? I don't got anything else, but you know what? I did see something interesting I want to talk about okay. real quick, and that was from Big Gip. Now, we know that um, Andre 3000 put out his flute album, Last week, and a lot of people were laughing about it, clowning it, saying that, you know, we ain't wait this long for three stacks to come out with no damn flute album, right? And I agree with a lot of that. Oh. But at the same time, this is what he wanted to do. This is what he wanted to do. But last week, rappers Andre 3000 outsold his flute album. He uh -huh. sold 24,000. He also Nas, Logic, Lil TJ, ST. G, Ice Spice, Wayne, Kodak Black, Macklemore, Ray Sermon, Westside, Gunner, French Montana, Real Boston, Richie, Yo Gotti, and DJ Drama. Outselling mainstream rappers with an ambient flute album is such an Andre 3000 thing to do. That's the caption. What's your thoughts on that, man? Now, obviously, these aren't first week numbers for a lot of these artists. Um, it, I, I wouldn't assume. Shit, if it is, that'd be crazy. Right. But what do you think about that? Andre 3 stacks because of with a flute album outselling a lot of these mainstream rappers and they their albums. I think it, I, first and foremost, I don't think that sales really matter like they used to mm -hmm. back in the day. I think it's a little bit different, but in this case, in this instance, I think it speaks volumes. You know that people were waiting and being able to space your music out so much like he did. I think people now are waiting. They really wanted to consume that. That's all, and I'm sure they're probably not disappointed. 
you know, by that album. Um, again, we come from that era kind of where people didn't drop as much. Mm-hmm. And it kind of was better because it's like, all right, Jay drop, DMX a drop, you know, whoever. Nas, they'll all drop within a certain period, but you might not get nothing for another year and a half mm-hmm. from all of them. So you got a chance to enjoy all of that body of work. Now it's like 30 people drop per week with 30 different songs. And the next week it's another 30, and another 30, another 30. And it's like you just can't really consume the music. You have to listen to music all day yeah. long yeah. to really like keep up with all the artists coming out right now. But I'm happy. I'm excited. Uh, I really want to kind of get back to the old hip hop. You know, it ain't got to be the same sound, but the same essence and the same, you know, um, the wordplay, how it actually meant something. You know, I want to get back to that. I want to get back to the hip hop where you had a six disc CD changer in your car and you threw in those albums. And although it was probably 30 songs, those were the 30 songs you rolled with and you had. Word. And it wasn't no phone and it wasn't no nothing all stupid. You had these songs. That's it. And you rocked to them. So you can listen to your Jay-Z and your Nas and your DMX and your Mob Deep or your I Had Tank or Chris Brown. Yeah. And get you a nice little mixture and just ride to the joint. And when you turn the car off and turn that motherfucker back on, you get right back to work. listen to the whole joint, too. And listen to the whole joint. Right. And then when that album's over, the next one kick over. And you can appreciate and learn and love and really put yourself in a time where you enjoyed that music. Those times are dead. It's been dead since about 08 for me. <laughs> me. Yeah, you're probably right. And that, <laughs> man, and that, and, and we, I talk about even love isn't the same as an adult. And maybe, I don't know, it, that, that all goes hand in hand. Because when I loved the most and had my most fuzz loving in high school, I got music to just go right with that soundtrack Word. of love. Got Word. it. Word. You know what I'm saying? I can go back to it immediately and remember the girl, remember the smell, remember the time, remember all that. Yeah. And I miss that type of stuff because I feel like human, those type of human connections keep us close to who we really are as self. And we, the further we stray away from that, the further we stray away from who we are for real. So That's real talk you know as mean? far as like even like humanity and loving people. Like those songs that you were able to kind of, even you was thinking about that chick. Mm-hmm. Like you put that joint on and it's like, when you're not around, you put it on, and it's like, all right, you know what I mean? You kind of think. I'm sure women got their songs, too. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, man, now it's just all about, you know, just sex and drugs and alcohol and hitting this club-type music. Let's get back to the love-type music. Mm-hmm. Even in hip-hop, like, you had this stuff where people was kind of storytelling. Yep. And I loved it because yep. it, it took you through the whole thing. And, and it, it was almost like a book. It took you out yep. of your body and put you in their shoes, and you yep. got to... I remember go- listening to like Big Pun and shit, and I'm thinking, you know, I got that whole Bronx experience and shit where he was yeah. going through this, listening to this shit. Right. You know what I mean? Jay Z, the same thing, Brooklyn and all that. So, Mason, I don't know, man. It's still some great artists out there as far as like RB. I don't know if you heard of Coco. I think Coco or something. Oh, she's, you know, um, yeah. you know who produced that record, her number one album, right? I could tell. The ICU joint? You, know you already know. You already know. I already know. You can't. I already know. You can just, just the way he just does it, man. The dude is a monster, bro. bro. Camp. And I, I was thinking after that, I was like, I was listening to the show. I'm like, he had to make that joint. It's funny, cause that's like his style. That's him. That old school. Yep. You know what I mean? And that's yeah. a badass record. Too. That joint is bad. I bro. was listening to it in Houston in March, and I'm like, yo, this is the number one record in the country. I don't care what nobody. Yeah. I'm saying I felt it. I was like, this record is bad. Yep. And man, he, man, that's the R&B I miss. That like I even fuck with uh, what's the shorty's name? Damn. What's the, her? Her's a beast. Yeah, I, man, I just it's some of them joints that I just fuck with, like, yep. and maybe I need to start listening to them more. That's why I feel like even and, and male R and B is dope, but women R and B, why they killing it, kicking them motherfuckers ass. You gotta go to Afrobeat to get some nice R and B type <laughs> shit now. <laughs> shit. I want good male R and B back too, man. And I don't know, man. It, it's just a certain feeling in music that's gone. And if we really could start promoting it and getting it back, man, I, I just think the world would be different. But that's just two old men talking some shit. Wait, what, what about Afro beats, man? Um, what's your thoughts on that? And what do you think about that? That's pretty much becoming like the number one thing now, Afro beats. You fuck with it? Yeah, I, I love do. it. Yeah, I love it. It's a fucking vibe, man. And yeah. I, I, mean, <laughs> I definitely enjoy that. Um, I like it executed the right way. I don't think everybody should try to jump into it and fuck right. it up and tear the art up. But the ones who do it the right way, man, that's a vibe, bro. I yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely fuck with the Afro beats. Definitely. Man. I'm saying. So yeah, man, another episode of the Hip Hop Uncensored Podcast in the books. We definitely appreciate everybody listening. And hey, every Friday, 5.30 Eastern, 5.30 Eastern, we'll be live on Viral Hip Hop News and Hip Hop News Uncensored. Might even be live Thursday, depending on if we get you know, a particular guest. But um, yeah, nevertheless, fun. yeah, we're going to work. We're going to work. We're going to pumping up this content. 
and I'm um, doing what we always have done the last six years. That's your brother Sam Man, Broward Hip Hop News. I'm your brother Oh God Hip Hop News. Uncensored together with the Hip Hop Uncensored Podcast. Over and out.